What's up guys and welcome back to Park Pros. Today I have my review of one of my personal favorite roller coasters at one of my favorite theme parks. That coaster is Time Traveler, a mock rides extreme spinning coaster at Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. When Time Traveler was announced in 2018, it looked like a fun coaster that was unlike anything we'd ever seen before, but not even the most optimistic coaster fans could have anticipated how good Time Traveler was actually going to be. And as the first and only mock extreme spinning coaster ever built, Time Traveler is arguably the best spinning coaster on the planet, and it seems to only be scratching the surface of the potential of Mock Ride's newest coaster model. We'll be taking an in-depth look at Time Traveler and the future of the extreme spinning coaster model, but first, if you guys are new to Park Pros or have been checking out the other videos lately, please be sure to take a second and hit that subscribe button as it really does help out the channel a ton. In December of 2016, the Mock Rides booth at the IAPA Expo was showcasing a new variation of their LSM launch coaster model meant to compete with Premier Rides' increasingly popular Skyrocket 2. Mock's main selling point and namesake of this model that they called the Extreme Spinning Coaster were new spinning cars that were capable of handling inversions and launches, adding an entire different dynamic to the traditional launch coaster. Throughout the entirety of 2016, Silver Dollar City officials had been making frequent trips out to Germany to visit Europa Park, a world-class amusement park owned by the Mach family, and a testing grounds for the manufacturer's new product innovations. Mach showed off their new extreme spinning coaster cars by attaching one to the back of Bluefire's trains and doing test runs on the 2009 Mach launch coaster. After extensive testing and tweaking of the model, the previously free-spinning train was equipped with a magnetically controlled spinning system, restricting the train's rotations to a level of spinning that Silver Dollar City fell in love with. And on August 16th, 2017, Silver Dollar City announced Time Traveler, the world's tallest and fastest full-circuit spinning coaster. Time Traveler was Silver Dollar City's largest single investment for an attraction with a price tag of $26 million. It opened to the public on Silver Dollar City's 2018 opening day to rave reviews from both the general public and coaster enthusiasts. I spent two days at Silver Dollar City in June of 2019 and was able to get 12 rides on Time Traveler. Here are my complete thoughts on the ride. Let's start as we usually do by going through Time Traveler's 3,020 feet of layout. You start by loading into the oval-shaped, steampunk-themed trains that feature lap bars as opposed to over-the-shoulder restraints. These trains are not only well themed, but the non-restrictive restraints are a major plus to the ride and allow for a lot of freedom and hang time during the ride's inversions. This coaster starts out with a bang as you pull out of the station and go down a 10-story vertical drop straight down into a valley. The train's cars start spinning as soon as you pull out of the station, which means that you can hit this drop forwards, backwards, or even sideways. When you factor in the sustained ejector airtime that this drop gives, especially in the back two cars, this really is a world-class element. Getting pulled down this thing backwards or sideways at a considerable speed is an incredible coaster moment. After the drop, you go up into a dive loop, which takes you into a banked S-curve and a helix. All of these elements give some really good spinning moments. Then you go up into the ride's first launch track, which takes you to a complete stop before launching you from 0 to 47 miles per hour in 3 seconds. The launch isn't too forceful, but gives you enough momentum to get you up over a tall overbank turn and through the ride's second inversion, a 95 foot tall vertical loop. This is a prime example of how the spinning creates crazy forces from ordinary elements, with my personal favorite in this case being rotated sideways as you hit the crest of the loop. From there, the track rapidly banks into a downward helix and then goes up into my personal favorite inversion on the ride, a zero G roll. It's hard to explain the bizarre feeling that this zero G roll gives off, but the cars almost always seem to be spinning a significant amount, so it's a completely disorienting inversion. From there, you do a quick turnaround and go into the ride's second launch, which takes the ride from 30 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. The only real function of this launch is to give the ride enough speed to get back up to the top of the hill. You do another steeply inclined overbank curve, which almost takes you inverted again, and then hit a final turn up into the brakes. From the initial descent out of the station to when you hit the final brakes, the ride time is about a minute and 15 seconds. After the addition of Outlaw Run in 2013, it was going to be hard for Silver Dollar City's next major coaster to live up to the large expectations of following up a world-class wooden coaster, but somehow, Time Traveler managed to live up to them. 
We'd seen dozens of spinning roller coasters all over the US before Time Traveler, but none had come even close to what Time Traveler accomplishes. The drop, the quick transitions, and the inversions are all significantly enhanced by the unpredictable nature of the spinning. This ride gives off some truly bizarre forces that you can't find on any other coaster model. It's not every day you get to go through a vertical loop sideways or a zero G roll backwards. And I have to say, the semi-controlled spinning mechanism is really what makes this ride special. I personally don't mind traditional spinning coasters, but I know there's a fair number of people who straight up refuse to ride them. Time Traveler has just enough spinning so that it adds a new dynamic and feeling to a routine launch coaster layout, but it isn't out of control to the point where you may experience any whiplash or nausea or anything like that, which traditional spinning coasters occasionally give you. The spinning creates this fun, disorienting feeling, which makes it hard to keep track of where you're at and what's coming next. The only other coaster I've been on that has an equally disorienting but still enjoyable ride mechanic like this would be X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. With the unpredictability of the spinning elements, no two rides on Time Traveler are ever the same, which really keeps the coaster fresh and makes it one of the most re-rideable coasters I've ever been on. Every ride on Time Traveler feels like a new experience, and I'm confident that I could comfortably sit on this coaster for hours on end without ever getting bored. Time Traveler was designed with the entire family in mind, but it still manages to give a pretty intense ride experience. This is especially true if you're sitting in the back car. That first 90 degree drop out of the station in the back car gives one of the greatest moments of sustained ejector out there, and half the time you're doing it while backwards or sideways. Time Traveler is definitely a back row ride if you want the most intense combination of speed and spinning, but if you're looking for a more tame ride with less spinning, I suggest sitting up front. Time Traveler somehow manages to fill the role of a family friendly, almost intermediate style coaster for Silver Dollar City, while still having those intense moments and arguably being the best coaster in the park. It's weird because Time Traveler feels more family friendly than coasters like Powder Keg and Wildfire while still being considerably more intense than those rides. To me, this is why this ride is such a perfect fit for Silver Dollar City. Outlaw Run was the crazy intense, out of control thrill coaster that put the park on the map for enthusiasts, but Time Traveler is equally as good of a coaster, while appealing to a wider range of riders. And that's part of the reason why I think the extreme spinning coaster model has unlimited potential for mock rides. Dennis Gort, the head of track development for Mock Rides, has said that the vehicle for their extreme spinning coaster has no limitations, and that it can be applied to a multitude of coaster applications, including a mega coaster or even a hyper coaster. Time Traveler is already so good, and it feels like a very conservative version of what this coaster model is capable of. In hindsight, I wonder how extreme Silver Dollar City considered going with Time Traveler. We know that they toned down the original amount of spinning from the model's early designs in order to cater to families, and I'd imagine that the $26 million they spent on the coaster was probably about as much as they were willing to pay. But if Silver Dollar City would have gone with a more thrilling version of Time Traveler, even if it was just 50 feet taller and 15 miles per hour faster, I legitimately think it could have been a top 5 roller coaster in the entire United States. There is another extreme spinning coaster coming to Plaza Land in Belgium in 2021. This coaster will be slightly taller and faster than Time Traveler, and includes two more inversions. From the looks of it, this ride seems to have a more thrilling layout than Time Traveler's, but even then, I think it's still just scratching the surface of what Ma can do with this model. Plopsa Land paid 15 million euro for this coaster, which converted to US dollars comes out to around 16 million. That is significantly cheaper than what Time Traveler cost. But I think that has a lot to do with Time Traveler's expensive station building and the mountainous terrain it was built on. The hefty price tag for these coasters is likely why we haven't seen more of these built since Mach introduced the model in 2016, and it also probably plays a factor in why a park hasn't built a more extreme version yet. But if one day there's a park out there willing to shell out 30 plus million dollars to build a taller, faster, and more intense version of this ride, there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to be one of the greatest roller coasters in the world. Mock Rides has an undeniable winner in their extreme spinning coaster model, and I'll be patiently waiting to see what they do with it next. So let's go ahead and place Time Traveler into our Park Pros coaster tier list. This might be a little controversial, but Time Traveler is going to be the first coaster I put into the Elite category. There's a few reasons why I think it's worthy of being categorized as Elite. First, if you put normal mock trains on Time Traveler, I still think it'd be a pretty solid coaster. 
The spinning element takes this coaster to the next level and adds a whole other dynamic to the ride. Second, Time Traveler achieves this rare paradox of being family friendly while still having some really intense moments. It's just such a crowd pleaser, maybe more so than any other coaster I've ever been on. Overall, Time Traveler is one of my personal favorite roller coasters. It's completely rewritable, it has a beautiful setting, it's really well themed, and overall, it's just one of the most enjoyable coasters out there. If you think I'm overstating how good this coaster is, go to Silver Dollar City and get a backseat ride for yourself. I promise you'll be blown away. That's it for my review of Time Traveler. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, go check out our Instagram, at ParkPros. I post channel updates on there, and this video was actually voted on by my Instagram followers. So make sure to give us a follow on there to stay up to date on the channel. As always, thank you guys for checking out the video, and we'll see you all next time.